Hey, it's your boy Greg Hubber here reporting from my hotel in L.A., um, you know, because of the show last night. Thank you so, so much, guys. I, you guys have been a great support for me over the past years. just want to say thank you. Thank you also, subscribers, because without you guys, it'd be, I'd be nothing, right? Eight million subscribers in one week. Damn! Right? I couldn't even believe it when I saw it. Anyways, this is not the point that I'm talking to you about. What I'm going to talk about today is my hero, Terry Fox. In case some of you who didn't, who don't know what, who Terry Fox is, he's a Canadian that had his leg amputated when he was very young. And um, what happened was he had a dream to run across Canada and raise money for cancer research. Terry was born July 28th, 1958 in Winnipeg. In 8th grade, Terry wanted anything more but to play basketball, but he wasn't a very good player. His coach tried to steer him toward other sports, wrestling or cross-country running. Terry trained to run out of respect for the coach, but he didn't give up on his goal of playing basketball. As an athlete, he was used to pain, but near the end of his first year, he noticed a new pain in his right knee. One morning I woke up and I couldn't get out of bed that day. They told me I had a malignant tumor and that I had to have my leg amputated in four, in four days. And I decided after my year and a half of chemotherapy that I'd try and run across Canada and raise as much money as I could for the Canadian Cancer Society. With a lot of training and hard work and running every day, Terry was finally ready for the Marathon of Hope. He took faces around him in the cancer clinic and then determined that he would not only run to help himself, but to help others. Terry decided to run for cancer research. On April 12, 1980, the Marathon of Hope began. April 12, 1980 was also the day when Terry Fox dipped his artificial leg into the Atlantic Ocean on at St. John's, Newfoundland. Terry ran 40 kilometers per day. Along the way, as the word of his cause spread, people lined the streets, applauding and urging him on. Terry was inspired by the crowds, toughing out the pains and sores, until September 1st, 1980. After a strong start that, mor that morning in Thunder Bay, Terry began experiencing some chest pain and he felt really weak. His best friend Doug and his brother Daryl finally decided to take him to a hospital. The cancer had spread. And now I've got a chance for my lungs. And uh, we got to go home and, tr and try and do some more treatment. But uh, all I can say is uh, if there's any way I can get out there again and finish it, I will. The 143 days and 5,373 kilometers, he returned to his home in BC. He told the press, I'm going to do my very best, I'll fight, and I promise I won't give up. On June 28, 1981, Terry Fox died with his family around him.
After Terry's death, people made a Terry Fox Foundation, which raises money every year for cancer research. Thank you guys for listening to what I had to say about Terry Fox. And uh, all I have to say is uh, goodbye, everyone, and please support cancer research. Peace. Terry Fox was... In case some of you didn't know, Terry continued playing basketball at Simon Fraser University. As an athlete, he was used to pain, but near the end of his first year, he noticed a new pain in his right knee. Video for school. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Bye. 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 Hey, everybody. It's your boy Greg Hubbard reporting from LA. I'm in my new hotel this time. It's pretty amazing um i just want to say thank you guys for all the people that came to my show and of course all the subscribers so without you guys i don't know what I, I don't know where i'd be right now in life um as this video isn't really about me it's gonna be about polino come on why'd you have to get into my show i, I worked so hard stop